Welcome to week two's discussion portion of the course. Uh, if you've gotten to this point, that means that you're ready to embark on your first of seven good, bad, and the ugly discussions. And you're probably thinking, um, you know, what is this and why do I need to do them? Well, basically, um, what we need to do is we need to basically train our eye as a web designer. And I love how your book discusses that we all need to be observant web users. Um, we've all seen good and bad websites. We see them every day. A site leaves us with you know, lasting impressions that might affect whether we return to the site. You know, and what's the goal of our websites that we make? You know, to get users to essentially use them and get what they need. Um, so what, what would make a bad website bad? Or what makes a good website good? And I'm hoping that we're going to be deriving these types of principles from having a specific topic each week that we're going out and we're looking for amongst similar websites. So we're out searching and researching for um, good examples and bad examples based on a specific principle of a similar website. And then we're also reviewing the, the critiques of other students in the class. We're going out and looking for attributes like, you know, whether a site has meaningful content or not whether a site has a good visual design or not, whether a site has good user interface or not. So each week we're going to be involved in these discussions. And we need to make sure that um, we're applying what we're learning here in these discussions to our term projects. So what are we keeping an eye out for? We're keeping an eye out for functionality and design. And the two websites have, so what is functionality you might ask? Well. Functionality is, you know, how a website functions. Design, that's how a website is designed. Let me explain by taking a look at an example. Here we have one of my favorite websites. I go to it all the time. Kind of an Amazon junkie. I'm always going here to try to find good deals. So functionality. Functionality of a website. This is, for example, look. You hover over different areas and you have these pop-up, uh, little pop-up boxes that tell you what a little snippet of information that you would find by clicking on these links. That's that's how a website functions. This drop down menu, that has to do with functionality. Um, just having the links change color from this blue to, an, to the orange, that's functionality. Now what would be design? Design would be the color choice of this link. At onset being blue, Design choice is blue with the underline, but a really good design choice that Amazon makes is it integrates this yellow-orange color with the hover. Why in the world would they use this yellow-orange color? It probably has something to do with their branding, their logo. Well, it does. So that's a very good design choice. So shop by department, this has to do with functionality. But the choice to have Kindle Fire be this color, that has to do with design. So as a web designer, we always need to be going out looking for, uh, keeping an eye out for the functionality and design of a website. Very important when it comes to a web critique. So let's say I wanted to critique Amazon with a similar website. Well, what would be a similar website to Amazon? Maybe I would go to another website that I go to all the time, eBay. So maybe I would be comparing the, the functionality and design of Amazon with eBay. Well, one thing you need to realize is that this week, we're going to be comparing our sites based on how their content is meaningful and about their about pages. So let's say for Amazon, we would be critiquing on how this site has meaningful content and their about page. So let's try to find their about page. Um, their about page, sometimes depending on the type of site, it would be found here maybe in the, in the footer. Um, but I'm guessing it would be this is probably this get to know area. This would be the content that you'd be finding in terms of our about page. For eBay, the about page information would be down here again in the footer about eBay. We're all going to be having about pages on in our term projects. So um, we're just going out and we're taking two similar websites and we're talking about meaningful content, how that content is meaningful. We're also taking a look at their about pages. And then we're also eventually going to be making, like I said, about pages for our own movie genre websites. It could be about the movie genre. It could be about you, the web designer. It's totally up to you.
but I don't want to lead you down too many, uh, give you too much information, but basically we're all going to be looking at these different about pages and we're going to be gleaming from them, you know, examples of what should, what should be in them and what shouldn't. Um, so that's the kind of things that I'm looking for in your critique. So now you've done your research and now you're ready to do your posting. So make sure you read the information on the lecture page that introduces you to the discussion posting. So, you know, it says, uh, let's get started um, looking at some comparable websites. Again, I talked to you about why those com websites need to be comparable. We're talking about meaningful content and content is so important when it comes to a website. Without content, you know, really what is it? Because that's what the user's wanting. And then I talked to you about um, uh, information from uh, an expert that talks about why uh, websites need to have meaningful content. When designing a website, it's important to provide helpful and knowledgeable information about a company, product, services, blah, blah, blah. blah. If, you're running, if you're running a blog, informative articles related to your area of expertise are incredibly helpful as well. While it's important to sell yourself or your company, it's also you don't want to oversell it either. Um, so you want to include in the about pages, you want to include information about your background, blah, 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 blah. Uh, more information is uh, more than, more often than not, its potential client will select a company with, that's a real person behind it. So that just talks about, you know, the importance of the about page. So you've done your research. Let's say, like here, my example, brownrecluspider.com. So I would just, um, you, let's say this was your bad example. You would need to discuss for us in your discussion posting why it's a bad example. And then you would also need to find a comparable website to be able to discuss that's a good example. So what would a comparable website be? That would be another spider website. So let's say we're ready to do our posting. So now you get to the part where you can actually create your posting. So again, here I talk about uh, two different websites, comparable websites, brownrecluspider.com and brownrecluse.com. Welcome to our... So now you need to, so you found your own comparable websites. Now you want to be able to share this with the class. So we're going to create a message. It would help the class if we knew before we go into your message what, 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 uh, the, some, what type of website you're talking about. So maybe I would write brown recluse spiders. In the body of your message, uh, don't forget you do have the ability to write your message in HTML. This is a web class, so definitely able to. you should definitely explore that. Uh, why would you need to write in HTML? It would be helpful for us to actually have links that we can click on stuff like that, but it's not required. Um, so you can just enable the HTML creator. So you, this, this WYSIWYG will allow you to design the HTML message without having to hard code it. Um, so we just clearly need to know what the bad example might be. And then we would clearly need to know, you know what the good example might be. So as you know from reading what we were just discussing. My bad example is the brownrecluspider.com. And just a snippet, you know, you would just tell us, you know, why brownrecluspider.com was uh, a bad website. And then you would talk about a good example. And this is just a rough sketch. I'm not actually doing it here, but I would expect your posting to be a little bit more eloquent. So let's say you fully told us what your bad example is, what your good example is. You've told us in the subject that you're talking about spiders. And remember, what you're writing has to be related to uh, meaningful content. And you're critiquing it in terms of functionality and design, in terms of what we're critiquing this week, which is meaningful content and having a solid about page. And now you're and then you would just post your message. And then you would also make sure that you're actively in discussionary discussing with everybody their postings. But now you're probably thinking, well where does the ugly come in? That'll come in next week when we're actually voting on it as a class what of the of the bad examples, which one was the ugliest and why. So it's just a fun act exercise to do. So I hope you enjoy uh, all of the uh, the that what we're going to be doing within the discussion area as we're developing, training our eye to be 
uh, a web designer that is out there looking at what's good and what's not. And we hope that we can, like, I've, like we've been saying, apply that to our term projects. For more information about this assignment, always don't forget that I give you uh, links to the course overview. I highly recommend, that was this link right here. You'll find that off, all, all over the course. So just scroll down to the bottom and then you're going to find the good, bad, and the ugly discussion. And here's some of the stuff that we've already been kind of chatting about. To receive full credit for the posting, make sure that you do these things here. And then I also give you your topic. So if you actually want to go ahead and just start thinking about posting that you might want to do for week four, what you might want to do for week five to go ahead and kind of work ahead and prepare, that's fine. Here I talk about how you receive full credit for your participation. So don't forget that these resources are here too. So good luck with your postings and let me know if you have any questions.